Hello everybody, welcome back. Joe White here for your Monday noon edition of Ask Joe. We do this every Monday. Ask Joe is what we call on the spot coaching, your chance to ask questions, life, love, business, any type of coaching related question. You can do that in the comment section or you can do it in the messenger if you want to remain anonymous. We do this for about 30 seconds, but let me introduce myself in case you are new and just kind of scrolling by or this pops up on your news feed. My name is Joe White. I am the president, founder, sounds so official, doesn't it, of Get Life Coaching. We started, um, I started this 21 years ago in my basement and I still love it every day, right? And we help individuals and businesses achieve freaking extraordinary results. That's what we do. I also own the Firewalking Institute and we're the home of firewalking. If you don't know what firewalking is, it's where you take off your shoes and you walk barefoot over 1200 degree coals. We are the home of firewalking. We are the ones that start the whole movement back in the 1980s. No, not me, but the company that I purchased and uh, been involved with for almost a decade. We've trained Tony Robbins, T. Harv Ecker, Dr. Wheel, a whole bunch of other people here. So come on in everybody. If you have any questions, uh, make sure you say hi, right? Make sure when you come in, you say hi. And you can certainly put your questions in the comment section. If you want to remain anonymous, you can drop them in the um, in a messenger and I can get them that way also. But uh, we got some questions that people pre-submitted. If you go to my Facebook page, you can, uh, if you look at where I announced it the day of, you can find a jot form, just a form mechanism you can fill out and pre-ask a question, right? Or some people do it to Messenger too. But uh, we do this every Monday at noon, so come and join us, about 30 minutes. I'm drinking my Nespresso coffee from my, my daughter gave me the OC. So I'm waiting Christmas all year round here. All right, let's get into some of the questions, shall we? First one, and I get this a lot, man. I mean, I, I say in the last three years, 80% men, 20% women, but um, I'll, I'll read the question. My son is 22. He lives at home and is very unmotivated. He smokes pot and we're all struggling with it and him. He doesn't seem to be motivated to do anything. We don't know what to do. Like I say, hi, Ann, how are you? We've been getting a lot of this, like in coaching. You know, people come in for a complimentary coaching session and they send their son to me to help. Um, fortunately, I do very well, uh, probably because I'm a male, right? And I'm, I'm old enough to understand, but I'm not unrelatable, right? Because of my background. Um, but there are a large contingency of young men that, have just lost their way. And, um, you know, I, and a lot of them smoke pot. And look, you know my background, right? I was addicted to cocaine, alcoholic, addicted to every drug imaginable, overdose died, all that. You know, I, I'm not against alcohol when people drink responsibly. I'm not against people who smoke pot, right? Who do it responsibly. I know plenty of people do, right? Um, but I never look at what people do. I always look at the reason why. Right? If you're medicating yourself, and you can medicate yourself on Facebook or Netflix, right? There's a lot of different things you can medicate yourself with. Um, however, um, I, I do see that. I see, I see two groups of men, I, or young men. I see uh, the smoking pot and drinking, and then, you know, either pills or heroin. Is that transition, right? If, you, if you're unfamiliar, right? Um, a lot of younger people, or a lot of adults too, but you'll see with the younger, hey Ken, how you doing? They start with the pills because they can get them, then the pills become harder and expensive, and heroin is dirt cheap and just arrive right up to Kensington, right? So it's not that hard to get. Um, so when they come to me, there's really a couple different things. So like, short of me saying to the person who submitted this, Set up a complimentary session with me and your son, right? You can just go to calljoewhite.com. Easiest thing to do. But I want to give some solutions, like if for those who want to try it on their own. Um, I think men today, young men, that 18 to 29, 30 range, and I think a lot of men, but I'll speak to just that gen. 
um, they've lost the way and they struggle with their identity of who they are, right? Whether there's conflict or challenges with the father figure or the father figure is gone or they have a non-serving definition of masculine energy, right? In other words, they find anger, right? As a way they can feel in the masculine energy, like a very juvenile way. Sex is a way, like conquest of women. And one of the reasons why I can help so many of these young men is because now I recognize it when I was in my 20s, right? I, I, I see these kids sitting across from me and they're just like me. Hey, Barbara, how are you? Um, like, I, it's like scary how similar they are, right? So if you have a son and he's lost his way, I, I think there's two things I want to say, right? If your son is in, an, um, I don't want to say an addiction, but using drugs, right? You know, there's people who abuse drugs and there's addiction, right? But I think the hardest thing for parents to understand is to, hello, Lanka, is to like understand the addict's mind. Like when I work with the kid, I also end up working with the parents too, so they can understand. Like non-addicts don't understand the addict's mind, right? They it, like just just stop using, get a job. That solves everything, and it's not the case, right? It's not a matter of just stop using. Yes, obviously that's what they need to do, but it's not. There's steps that goes along with it. And some, if they're addicted, the steps are really about getting and saying, learning how to stay clean, then worrying about a job, right? It, it, so th there's a lot of moving pieces when it comes to addiction, when it comes to um, young men who are addicted, right? Because we know it's not the drugs or the alcohol, right? If you don't know that, it's not the drugs or the alcohol. That's not what it is. It is that underpinning feeling of lack of self-worth, lack of being enough, and a few other pieces. And that's what drives addiction, right? Sure, there's a chemical, physical addiction with some drugs and obviously with alcohol, but that's not, it's not, I remember like I, like when I got clean, when I bought the, the self-help tapes, November 93, I just thought like I had to get off cocaine. I didn't realize it was the other drugs, it was the alcohol, it was, nor was there underpinning like patterns inside of me that was was not serving me. So if you have a son like that, first thing to do if you're a parent, go to an al -Anon meeting, go to an al -Anon meeting. There are 12 step support meetings for people, family and friends who loved ones are uh, caught up in addiction because very often, the more you do what you think is common sense, the more it pushes them away, right? So understanding and having some resources of people who have been there before, either gotten through it or getting through it or learning to survive it is really, really useful. And I recommend that to every parent or anyone who has somebody who's in their family, in their lives, that are addicted to drugs or alcohol because it's... Um, you don't it's it's you don't understand it right it's it's i do right even though i have 20 what six years clean sober i you know i i still have an addictive personality if more is if more is good if a little bit is good more must be better right i have a, a healthy obsession about things in my life today uh working out spending time with my daughter grow my business find my hearty things like that right tattoos <laughs> right uh but so I get, I get it, right? I, I get that understanding. Hugo, how are you? Um, so if you're, if, if you're a parent and you're of that and you have a child who's in that 18 to 29 range, um, and they kind of lost their way, like what they, what, so you need to kind of get your head straight around this so you can better serve them. Um, what to do is, like they need, like how I work with them and what they need, the kids, is they, they need to reestablish self-esteem. And self-esteem is not coffee, right? It's not like, hang on a second, let me drink some self-esteem. Mm, yeah, right? No, especially for young men. It's about reclaiming their identity out of that freaking immature, juvenile warrior mode that, that they think like that's it, right? Number two 
is they got to get that confidence back in themselves, like that true confidence. And they don't get it without living on the edge. You know, you see a lot of um, like young men stuck playing video games because look, I can go and I can like live on this virtual edge that exists in Xbox or PlayStation, but it doesn't exist in the real world. So they got to get that confidence back in their own mask and energy to find who they are right now. And number three, they got to get reattached to some dreams because one of the things I've seen in probably the last three, four years working with a lot of those 18 to 29 year old men is they don't have dreams. I mean, they got pipe dreams, but they don't have dreams that have any um, a semblance of a plan of how to get there. So if, if you if you have a son and he's if you just kind of just joined us, well, the question was 22 year old son living at home, unmotivated, smoking pot, doesn't have a job, fighting with the family, fight with mom, fight with dad, uh, a lot of struggles, right? What do I do? Um, number one, go and seek some like out on, out and on for you, right? Just so you can understand it. Number two is where you got to help lead them is self-esteem. That's the first step. Gets confidence back in the masculine energy as a mature masculine energy and get them to, to dream and have actions again, like dream more than just where they're at. It's amazing. Um, addicts are the most resourceful people I ever met, <laughs> right? I mean, I cannot tell you how many times in 21 years I thought my business was done. But I've always found a way to pull rabbits out of a hat. And I'm resourceful. I find solutions. You know, if you know me, one of my core beliefs is that there's always a way. I can tie that all back to my addiction. But instead about getting drugs and getting high, it's about making myself better, improving my life, helping my business, helping my daughter, helping those who come into us. But if you're a parent out there and you have your son at home or a daughter, you know, it's not totally like designated just for like the men. Um, you know, that is, um, you know, set up a complimentary session with me. Easiest way. Uh, just go to calljoewhite.com. It will take you right to a form. You don't have to go to my website and find it. And see if we connect, right? I Again, I, I'm pretty successful at getting rapport with them because I've been there and I can talk that language and I talk with them, not down at them or down to them or not at them, right? And that's usually what they get. They go to a therapist and they find this old person, probably like younger than me, <laughs> Right, I'm 53, but they seem older and they seem stuffy and they seem like you know, like I get it, I get it, you know. I I, I start cursing from the beginning to get that rapport. That's easy for me. And they walk in, they seem like you know, my, I'm tattooed. Uh, I look at the way I do, and you know, and I'm legit because I lived it. So that's a couple of different suggestions here. If that if you need to, you can always just kind of reach out to me if you have a question. Okay, guys, welcome everybody. Let me say hi to some people here. Welcome to Ask Joe. We do this every Monday at noon. You can ask any questions in the comment section. Tom, welcome again. Michael, give me, give me that. Hello, Michael. Brett, how are you? Ken, yes, my brother. Hope, hope you're doing well, Ken. Barbara, yes, I wish my nephew would use his powers for goods. Um, Robin, hello. You know, Barbara. Oops. Okay, Barbara writes, you know you're Dick Clark. You never age. Thank you. Now, I'm adopted, but I've always joked that Dick Clark lived about, before he was like Dick Dick Clark, right? Before Bandstand, he lived about 15 doors, like down the street from my parents. And I've always joked that my mom had an affair with Dick Clark, right? But I'm adopted, but it's still a good story, right? Heather, welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so if you have any questions, comments, let's get on more lighter stuff, man. Um, whew, man, okay. So Jerry sent me a text. Let me kind of pull it up here. I'm looking at my monitor here. Um, uh, topic, da, 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 other anchors. Um, and and it's, a, it's, it's that talk that the way we have always done it, well, when you're the boss, you can do it your way. It's almost like when you work in an environment where you're told 
Like, this is how you do it, right? And I, I think very often, um, you know, I, that's why I, I, I'm an entrepreneur, right? I don't like someone telling me what to do, right? Um, and it's tough. It, it, it's tough when, you know, you work in an environment that says, that does not foster independent critical thinking and value that, right? Um, Ken, I'm doing very well, 120 today. God bless you, brother. God bless you. When this shit all clears up, man, let's get together, right? Um, and he sent me a picture, and I've seen this before, and I'll get into it more here in case I'm not clear. Um, there we go. A shark in a fish tank will grow to eight inches, but in the ocean will grow to eight feet or more. A shark will never outgrow its environment. And the same is true about you. Many times we are around small thinking people, so, so we don't grow. Change your environment and watch your growth. We've said that m numerous times before, right? So how many times are you in a situation of your life where you're surrounded by people? Now, if you work in an environment, yeah, you can choose just to quit your job, but sometimes it makes more sense to kind of stay in there, right? But, but look at life. I mean, you can judge the quality of someone's bank account and the quality of someone's existence by examining who they surround themselves with consistently. And I've said this a lot on Ask Joe. If it's your family, then love your family, but choose your tribe, right? I mean, and if you're such a tribe, then maybe it's time to prune your tribe, right? Get rid of some tribes members. Um, you know, it's really easy to get caught up in this moo cow thinking. Moo cow thinking is just follow the herd. And it's real easy today. I mean, I do not get into politics here. And some days, there's really not much difference between red and blue about how the politicians operate. People love blaming the media, right? But it's not the media, right? Because you can blame the media all they want. Every media, Fox, CNN, MSNBC, they're in the business not to sell political agenda guys, they're in the business to sell advertising space. And they know their target market, just like Apple knows their target market, Android knows their target market, and they blast messages for their target market so they get the ratings as high as they can so they can sell their advertising as much as they can. And if you don't think that's the truth, take a course in marketing and then we can talk, okay? Because that's the bias. If you want a liberal, if you want a right-wing bias, it's not, it's to sell advertising because all those businesses, corporations have stockholders and those stockholders want their return on their investment, right? So with that being said, but we live in a world where most of our news is consumed by very slanted positions. Now, if, if, if you're, if you're blue, you don't like CNN, right? You're going to watch that, but you are getting filtered because again, they're giving you a constant diet of food that you want. Fox is giving you a constant diet. It's like, oh, he likes hamburgers. Let's give him more hamburgers, right? He likes chocolate cake, chocolate cake, chocolate cake, hamburgers, chocolate cake. Throw a shake, milkshake in there. He'll like that too, right? Both are doing this. Number one source of news today is Facebook, right? Throw Twitter in there. That's where people get it. So we get such boiled down, opinionated version of news. Why am I sharing this? I'm sharing this because we have to break free from the moo cow thinking. We need to learn the ability to watch and to discern and to be critical thinkers in any area of lives. Obviously in politics, in health, in spirituality, of course, but also in our own lives, in running your own business, right? You do not want to surround yourself with people that say yes, sir, or yes, ma'am. You want people to challenge you a little bit. You want people to point things out to you. I'm really good at knowing when my optics are clear and when my optics aren't clear on something. I know where to go to get some feedback. Like, you know what? I'm not seeing this, so I don't trust how I'm seeing this. So we want to break free from the moo cow thinking. Number two is understand the expectations of your peer group are going to mirror your expectations. So make a list of your friends. And like, really, like, like how many of those friends 
are living the quality of life that you want. If you have a lot of people that are successful, and successful doesn't just mean finances, it means spirituality or great relationships. You ever notice that people who struggle in relationships, they got a lot of friends who are divorced. Yet people who are great in relationships tend to have friends that have long-standing relationships. It's not by accident, right? So surround yourself with people with, that live with an expectation of life much higher than you. But here's, what, here's why people don't do it. You're going to feel inferior. You're going to feel um, like a small fish in a big pond, and we don't like that. We'd rather feel like a big fish in a, big, in a small pond. So it was a couple of years ago, it was down Texas, and there was a show on, and um, it was similar to a Shark Tank-esque, but it was more education. So they had a bunch of panelists, and they asked me to be a panelist. So a guy went on stage, did his pitch. And I have to admit, I'm sitting there, and I knew some of the people, I knew some of the people. I was the poorest person on there. I mean, the guy next to me sold his business for about $35 million, right? We had an ex-NFL athlete, right, running his financial services business, right? And I actually felt for a minute inferior, right? And I felt that. I'm like, what's going on with this, right? And I go, oh, I'm judging my worth, right, to a bank account, right? And like, I, they're more successful than I am because they're more worthy than I am, right? I could feel myself wanting to like sink back in my chair. And I'm like, no, no. And I kind of did what I did. I asked questions. And it was very interesting because by the end of it, every single person on the panel was agreeing with me, like how I was seeing it. And it was such a lesson because I caught myself, right? In that moment, I was going to play small. But instead of saying, you know what? All those people, like, I don't, I'm not jealous of. It inspires me that there's still more for me to grow. There's still more for me to learn. And I deserve to play with, in a bigger league. But to do that, you have to have some level of feeling inadequate until you find your footing. But that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Number three is settling for average. People just, you know, they go to work and they just do their thing. And they try not to get, you know, too much hassle or too much overwhelm. And like, I, I, God, if, if you do that and it gives you a great life, then God bless you, right? You know, if you can put your 40 hours in per week and you get to do all the stuff that you want to do outside of work, that's great. But if you don't get that benefit from your job, then you really want to examine what you're doing and why you're doing it, right? Because life is too short to spend a third of your life doing something that doesn't inspire you. And then lastly, if you are stuck in that same old uh, hamster on the wheel type of thinking, like where do you find inspiration? You know, I've been pretty good at finding inspiration anywhere I can. You know, I, I, watch, I, I watch a movie and I get inspiration. I read a book, I get inspiration. I spend time with my daughter, I find inspiration. I, she's here, can you hear? Right, you wanna say hi, Em? Yeah. Yes, come on. Hi. Hey, right, this is Emily. She's the boss. Okay, I gotta get back to work, give me a kiss. Um, I'm trying to play Roblox again. Okay, in a few minutes, go. Mm, it's I'm done. I'm working on it now. Because I'm doing recording. Okay, right. And because I'm recording and I can't put the password. Why can't I tell you the password? No, go. Hi. All right. So thank you, Emily. Goodbye. She she's trying to work me. <laughs> go until I'm done. So we where do you find inspiration? I love looking at outside of my lane for what's working in other people's lane. Like I've stolen so much from like Apple. I am a big Apple fan, or other companies, or um, what other companies I'm a big fan of, or even like Harley Davidson, like brands I love, I, I start tearing apart and like, wow, they do this, it works, now how can I use it here? So one of the ways if you're stuck in a kind of a moo cow thinking, you can't go beyond that creative thinking, is to, if in business, look at brands and model off them. 
or look at other people in your life if you don't want to talk about business that are living the life that you want and interview them when i first started my career i would interview people i'm like you're great at this can i take you out for lunch and pick your brain and i would buy people lunch and i would say okay so why do you do this then what happens and then what happens and that helped to speed up my growth so that's that question let me say hi to some people and go through some stuff okay uh can can hello donna cam tanya heather heather writes do your research educate yourself make an informed decision that's about everything right that's a great point heather because at the end of the day you're responsible for your choices your decisions so you should do the research whether we're talking about politics medical religion whatever is important to you good 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 excellent point thank you for sharing. hello chris kimberly Ta here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so our final question of the day, we do this every Monday. If you have a question, jump in here. Say hi, everybody. Okay. Um, participate. Ask Joe is a participation sport. Is, I'm a 43-year-old male. It's a lot of male energy today. Um, and I've lost my confidence. I was performing at a high level when COVID hit. And now I feel like I'm spinning my wheels. So I get this. Like if you're like into sales, you you get this, right? Or if you're into sports or competitive, where like one moment you feel you can do anything. Like my analogy is like like some days I can close anything, then other days I don't even know how to close a door. Get it, right? Um, or you hear it in sports, like the baseball looks that big, right? It's not a mechanical issue. So the gentleman was doing great. The landscape changed. The rules of engagement have changed temporarily or permanently. We'll find that out. And what used to work for him isn't working. And he doesn't know how to adjust and right the ship. So confidence is like that funny thing. Like when you have it, you feel invincible. But when you don't have it and doubt creeps in, it destroys you. I mean... Quarterbacks and pitchers, you see it in sports. A great quarterback could be like throwing the ball like crazy, right? One game and like making these immaculate throws. But then all of a sudden the next game, he's under pressure. He gets picked off and then what happens? He throws another interception or they give up one home run. Like the great, great athletes have short, short memory spans because what happens is you start getting in your own head and you start doubting yourself. So how do you kind of, if you're stuck in a rut, in a performance rut, that's what we're talking about. Um, here are some things, right? And it's counterintuitive. I got into a spirited debate with a business owner the other day. And his argument was basically, you ride this storm out and hunker down. And I'm like, bullshit. Right? You don't, you're not stupid with your choices. You're not stupid, but I think being aggressive and ahead of the curve is always stronger. Right? I mean, just two different people, right? Um, so if you are spinning your wheels, how do you write the ship? Number one, focus, focus, focus. Write your goals. Every day, morning and night, I write my goals in my book, right? I just write my top five goals, right? I don't, reiterate them I don't change them I just write them out and I carry this book with me because it reminds me of what's most important because when I wake up in the morning my head is not in the freaking game right depending on how I slept and what's going on in my life right I want to be laser focused I want to embed in my subconscious mind that these five things are freaking must for me and I'll do anything to achieve them so write them down morning and then evening too. The next thing is massive, consistent, persistent action, right? And I'll borrow Grant Cadone's phrase and Grant says 10X. Whatever action you're doing, 10X it. Because whatever action you're doing is not enough, okay? Because people dabble. We get stuck, right? When we're driving for something, looking for results, as an indicator that we are headed in the right direction. 
Remember the day before GPS? And maybe you're driving on a highway or I remember this on like back roads and it was all foggy and you really couldn't see where you're at. So you weren't sure if the turn to your development was here or another mile up, right? You're a little bit disoriented. So you start looking for signs. Oh, that's where the church is. Okay. Right? Or maybe you're driving on the highway and you're not sure if you pass your exit on the turnpike and you know, you look for something to tell you if you need to get off the next exit or whatever the case may be. Right now you have GPS. It's not the same analogy, but if you're older like me, you remember. And uh, like that's good for that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, right, you cannot judge, you cannot base your confidence, your commitment, your consistency, your determination on results. Okay, if anything, right, I'll, I can show you how to wire yourself where the less results you get, the more you push into it, right? It's counterintuitive. Most of success is counterintuitive. That's why more people are unsuccessful in what they want and less people are successful because people do the intuitive, the, the common sense thing, right? Okay, I'm going to do this. No, sometimes success is counterintuitive, right? So you can't look for indicators or those indicators that you're getting the result that you want. Because you're going to subconsciously start taking your foot off the gas. You take your foot off the gas, what's gonna happen is you're gonna get less results. The less results you get, your brain's gonna say, see stupid, I told you so, and you're gonna take your foot off the gas more. Then you take your foot off the gas more, you just get less results, you get less results, your brain goes, see, I told you it's not working, and the confidence is gonna drop. Let me end with this, there's three C's, right? Right, three C's, I'll sum this up. And it doesn't matter how you do this, right? Come to my seminar, walk on fire, it will do it. Come to my coaching session, it will do it, right? Um, right, go out and take massive consistent persistent action, you can do it, right? So many different ways to do this. But there's, if you are stuck, there's three things you have to do. Number one, increase your commitment, tenfold. Commitment to what you're doing. In other words, we can't look for results to go more in. You got to believe in you. You got to believe in your result. Okay? If you look for indicators, especially starting off, I see this with a lot of coaches starting out, right? They, they, they try something that doesn't work, and they go, oh my God, it's not working. I'm not going to be a coach. And then all of a sudden, they again, they try a little bit less, and it, it per perpetuates further. So you have to raise your commitment. You gotta raise your confidence, okay? You gotta raise your confidence. And if you're not sure, fake it till you make it. I said this last week. I got into a spirit debate. It tends to happen a lot in my world. And someone said to me, um, you don't fake it till you make it. I forget the exact thing they wrote. I'm like, no, you fake it till you make it, okay? Now, it doesn't mean you accept fake it till you make it, right? You gotta work your ass off to make it. But if you don't have confidence, walk in that freaking room like you own it. Walk in that room with a million dollar smile, get your teeth whitened, right? Get a nice outfit and walk in there like you freaking own it. As you work on yourself till the inside meets the outside and you feel 100% congruent, okay? Um, but you got to have that confidence, Right, you gotta and, and to have that confidence. You gotta develop that short-term memory loss when it comes to failures. What taught me the most was for about two years, I did about sixteen shows a year, small business expo, feature speaker, traveled around the world. I mean, around the world, around the country, eighty thousand miles, speaking on stages. And some days it went great, and some days it was like, okay, who's ready to move forward now? Say I, and not one hand went up, and you felt like the biggest loser. Like, okay, if you're interested, come in the back table. I'll be there, right? And like people walking out and you're smiling and like, like you just want to crawl in a ball and, and like, I go home and cry. I think I did cry once in the beginning. But get rejected. God, see, this is counterintuitive, guys. You get rejected at what you love so many times, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. Because we put all this emphasis of what if I fail, what if they say no, what if I don't get to that weight. You know what? You haven't failed enough. If you're bitching about that fear of failing, you have not failed enough. It's the easiest way. No, 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 no. It's not the easiest way. It's the best way through it. The easiest way through it is 
not to do it, right? And just avoid it. That's what people do. But if you put yourself out there a massive amount of times, increase the amount of times you'll get rejected until you become so desensitized to it that you become so depersonalized, the failure, the nose, and you get so focused on what you want. It doesn't matter. If someone says no to you, like, okay, thank you so much for your time, right? And then you start focusing on that next person or that next step or that next tack that you're going to do, okay? Ken Bloomcast, Bloomquest. Fail, fall hard, fail fast. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love like the NASA term, you know, the uh, failure is not an option. I get it. Like they're talking about lives here. I'm talking about like a sale or a goal or something like that, right? But like we're so afraid to fail. We don't even use the word fail. No, we fail in life. We fall short. You close a the deal. They say no. You fail to close the deal. You're playing on a sports team. You end up losing the championship you fail to win the championship but it's not a bad thing right it sucks but lots of life parts of life suck but what happens is it makes you grow it makes you become more it makes you go back and ponder and ask yourself what can i do different it gives you different motivation we mess up our own lives, our children's lives, by protecting them and teaching them, like, like, and watering down failure, right? I want Emily to fail, right? Not injure herself, not get devastated, but I want her to fail because I want to learn the simplest thing that we get up when we fail. We get picked up off the, the canvas. We have that ability, right? Can you know all about this, right? You, you'll get, you'll get, like you'll get humbled, you'll you'll feel bad, but you'll realize that you can get up. And once you realize, right, it's Tyson Fury, right? If you don't know who Tyson Fury is, he is a heavyweight champion in the world. He's a linear heavyweight champion in the world. He is probably the best boxer out there right now. And um, there, just Google uh, Tyson Fury Wilder fight number one. Go to the fifteenth round. And Wilder is this huge muscular boxer that has the punch that can knock out anybody, right? But that's all he has. And in the 15th round, no, 12th round, I'm sorry, not 15, they don't do that anymore. Uh, Wilder punches, and, and Fury's this big white guy, right? And like kind of flabby at times, but he's fast and athletic. He knocks him out so hard. It was like, he hit him so hard, Tyson Fury's head bounced off the canvas. Everybody thought he was done. And the referee started counting, and all of a sudden his eyes opened up. And he did like the Undertaker, where he kind of just sat up. And something clicked inside of him. And he realized he'd been fighting the wrong way. And he took the fight to, Tyson, to, to uh, Dante Wilder, who's a great fighter, and ended up in a draw. They fought again a few months ago, and Tyson Fury destroyed him, right? So you don't know. Like, if you're out there, the first lesson you got to learn is that you can get knocked down and get back up. You can fail and recover. If you don't get that lesson in life, you're always going to avoid going after what you want. You'll go after for the things in your life that you think you can get, the safer stuff. And it might be a level of success, but not the level of success that you deserve. So the three C's is commitment, confidence, and consistency. Consistency is the third C. In other words, you got to go out there and you got to push, you got to push, you got to push, you got to push, and you got to stay the course. Most of the time, I see with people who run Facebook ads, they run it for, I had a client once, she ran it for a week. Five dollars a day. Five dollars a day, right? I didn't get any sales yet. I'm going to stop it. I'm like, well, like, first of all, it's only stage one, right? We haven't done retargeting yet. And it's five dollars a day. And like, we're just testing things out. Because I can't do this anymore. This ain't working. No, no, that's why your business isn't working. You gotta be consistent at what you do. Doesn't mean you can't change strategies, right? If something's not working, change a strategy, but you gotta be consistent in what you do. Because consistency is gonna win out. It's a tortoise in the hair. It really, really is. There's, when I first started, I was, 
I don't think I was the best. I mean, we were the first coach in Delaware here. Um, I remember going to NLP classes and other trainings, and I was never like the most gifted person, right? I always struggled with hell when I went to courses and learned stuff, right? And what happened was um, I just stayed with it. I stayed with it more than anybody, and I, I outlasted most of my competition. That's what I tend to do. And that's Emily's hand again, right? So recap here. Write your goals out, massive, consistent, persistent action, and stop looking at results as an indicator of success or not. Um, Barbara writes, oh my God, it's like you're in my brain right now. I want to shed a tear right now. Well, I hope that's a good tear. I am almost done. Can I say goodbye to these people? Right now. Okay, thank you. Can we kiss? Okay. So, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. This is Emily. Say hi, Emily. Hi. Right? So, I got to feed my daughter because, like, No, she... not feed. What do you want? I want you to show them the iPad. Oh, turn the iPad. Okay. So, real quick here, if you're interested in learning more or you want to take advantage of a complimentary coaching session, just go to call dot com call joewhite.com i tell my team everything you've been saying and we need to do a training for your team but it's very true barb you are a rock star i do love you uh barb and i wrote a book together she did a couple phd studies on our work right good excellent um also if you've gotten value from this I do ask, right, to share it on your page. You never know. Someone might be experienced, especially with the part with the the sons, right? We do have a lot of sons out there that lost their way 18 to 29. Maybe a parent will hear that and, like, get some answers or solutions. So we do this every Monday, so make sure you keep joining us. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Um, haha, you're going to have your hands filled with that little one, you think? Right? Wait till she gets to become a teenager. And she already knows, Barb, you're talking about her. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. And it's Joe. As always, rattle the cage. Say rattle the cage, Em. Rattle the cage. Now look in the camera say rattle the cage. Rattle the cage. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.